Good evening. I'm Mark Syme, minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, March the 17th. We will sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that hopefully will be beneficial to all of us. Here at Northfield, we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, maybe you have that book, maybe you don't. If you'd like to sing with us, I'll give you the title of the song. You can use your book. If you have one of ours, that'd be great. If you Google the song, whatever the case may be, uh, hopefully you'll be able to praise the Lord and sing with us. First song that we will sing in our book is number 399. It's entitled, Jesus Calls Us. Jesus Calls Us. <clears throat> Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives While restless sea day by day His sweet voice soundeth Saying, Christian, follow me Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden star from each idol that would keep us saying christian love me more in our joys and in our sorrows days of toil and hours of ease still he calls in cares and pleasures Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by his mercies. Savior, make us hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience. Serve and love thee best of all. The next song we will sing is number 172. The title of this song is I Just Came to Praise the Lord. 172. I Just Came to Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to love the Lord. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 431. Break thou the bread of life. Break thou the bread of life. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. John chapter 6 and verse 35. <coughs> Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord, my spirit pants for thee, O living word. Bless thou the truth, dear Lord, to me, to me. As thou didst bless the bread by Galilee, then shall all bonded cease, all fetters fall, and I shall find my peace, my all in all. We come to this part of our service where we commune with the Lord through his supper, instituted on the night in which he was betrayed, when Jesus broke bread with his disciples. It was the Passover season. This was the custom at this season. But this was a special breaking of the bread. This breaking of the bread would foretell his death on the cross. And he explained to his disciples what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to break the bread, symbolic of his body. They were supposed to drink of the fruit of the vine, symbolic of the blood that he was shed for the, for, for the forgiveness of sins. So as we gather together around the table, as we are instructed to do, on the first day of the week, let's remember what Jesus said to his disciples as we partake of this symbol of his body and this symbol of his blood. Let's pray before we partake of the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that in your divine wisdom, uh, you put this plan before us, that at the right time you would send Jesus to us he would die for our sins. As we partake of this bread, let's remember his body that was crucified so cruelly on the cross. Bless us as we partake. Help us to understand what uh, Jesus giving of his body was really all about. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. This morning's lesson was about the blood of Jesus. And as we partake of the fruit of the vine, we are to remember the blood that Jesus shed, the blood that he shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We're so grateful that uh, by the blood of Jesus that uh, so many blessings have been bestowed upon us. Uh, in particular, we're just mindful that we can be free from the guilt of sin because Jesus' blood washes our sins away. As we partake of uh, this fruit of the vine, help us to bring our sins to you, knowing that through his blood that they are forgiven. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Having 
completed the Lord's Supper, we now give a pause to do something else that we are instructed to do on the first day of the week. And that is we are to lay by in store and give back to the Lord that which we have prospered. Help us to understand how much we have indeed prospered in our lives. And as we give back, help us to understand that we give back what is the Lord's because all good things come from him. Um, we just pray that uh, our hearts will be opened because we know that God loves a cheerful giver and that we will give and we will give certainly as we have prospered uh, as a sacrifice to our Lord. Let's pray for the giving. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful uh, that as we just commune with you through the uh, bread and through the fruit of the vine, that we can again commune in a way and understanding that we are to give back to you. We give back to you so the church can uh, do what it is supposed <coughs> to do here on earth, that it will evangelize and bring others to the Lord and that we can indeed help those who are in need. Help us to give with an open heart, an open mind, and an opened uh, wallet and an open pocketbook that uh, we would give as a sacrifice to you. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we will sing is number 715. The church is one foundation. <clears throat> We'll sing verses one and three. One and three. The church's one foundation. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with the vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Hope you enjoyed our song service together and that uh, we were able to praise the Lord and uh, understanding that he is certainly worthy of our praise. I told you last Sunday evening we were going to start a series of lessons entitled Our Life Together. Um, this is all about the church, hence the last song that we sang, The Church is One Foundation. Um, last week, uh, we talked about a call to fellowship because part of what the church does and what it represents is a fellowship together because uh, the term church, which comes from the Greek word ekklesia, actually means the called out. And that's what we are. We are the Lord's church. And so we have studied in our life together the vertical relationship that we have with God and then the fellowship we have one with another. And we notice that in this 
fellowship. There's an intimacy. There is an intimacy of family. And in this lesson, what we will do for a few moments is to consider how the church in its fellowship is like a body. And so the title of my lesson this morning, uh, this evening, I'm sorry, under the, uh, under the general title of our life together is No Life Beyond the Body. Uh, the implication here is that the church is indeed the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, we will come to understand that uh, the body is uh, such with Jesus as its head and that its members are dependent upon each other so that it can truly be said, as my title this evening indicates, there is no life beyond the body. And so with that, let's begin with the very basics. The church as the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. This is proclaimed to us by the Apostle Paul in the first chapter of Colossians, verse 18. And he actually stated that. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, he again states that the church is indeed the body of Christ. So, as the body of Christ, what is the function of the church? Ephesians chapter 5 uh, kind of, uh, I believe, wraps that up for us. Uh, it is a group of people that have been saved by Jesus Christ, saved out of uh, God's love for us, that while we were sinners, he sent Jesus Christ to us, that he might make his glorious church, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 and 27, that he would make this church by sanctifying it and cleansing it so that it might be holy and without blemish, because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. It's nourished and it's cherished by Jesus Christ, as we are told in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 29. Uh, we have this relationship between husbands and wives that we're told the husbands are loved their wives and wives are to love their husbands. And then there's that very, very important comparison. We are to love husbands to wives and wives to husbands as Christ loved the church. But uh, the main point that I want to get at this evening is outside of the church, there is no life. There's no salvation outside the body of church, outside of the body that is the church. That's what Ephesians 5.23 clearly states. And there is no spiritual nourishment outside of the church. That is also in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 29. And so we know that salvation and nourishment comes from the church. And so with that in mind, how does Christ provide life to those in the body? Well, encased on the top of our bodies is our head. Our brain is in our head. Our brain directs everything that happens uh, to our body. Jesus is the head of the church. And with that in mind, Jesus directs everything that's supposed to happen within his body. Um, this is suggested and was suggested by Jesus in the 15th chapter of the book of John, where we have that wonderful comparison about the vine and the branches. And the figure of the vine and the branches, we being the branches, are connected to the tree. We're connected to God 
through the mind, and that is Jesus Christ. The illustrative statement of Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me, is certainly important. And to me, it uh, uh, just lets us know the importance of the church. Indirectly, it works through the working of each member. We are expected to minister to one another. That's what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 9. And each member is to do its part. Thus, we receive uh, life. We receive strength from two sources. We receive it directly from Christ through individual association with him. And then here is also an important part which can never ever be overlooked. We receive it indirectly from Christ through our association with our brothers and sisters in the Lord, members of the body. And remember, no life without the body. And understand, we can receive this um, comfort directly from God in Christ. That's what 1 Corinthians at chapter 1, verses 3 to 4 says to us. And we can receive it through prayer, as Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 6 to 7 states to us, with prayer and supplication, make your needs be known to God. And so uh, the, the end of that is the peace that passes all understanding will be found here. And what we can do, therefore, is that we can pass this comfort and this peace on to one another. And in this way, God indirectly, he indirectly uh, works within the members of the church in us and in one another. What we need to remember that as members of the body, we are all on the same walk. We're all on that same path. We all want to achieve the glory of eternal life with the Lord. And so with that, let's just examine for just a few moments the importance of each of the members of the body and how it affects one another. The Apostle Paul gives this illustration in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, especially in verses 26 and 27. And uh, he wants to make sure that we understand this. It's like saying uh, my arm is more important than my leg or my finger is more important than my toe. And <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say that, you know, we're big toes and we're little fingers and we're arms and legs in the church. But somehow we are as members of the body. We excuse me, we are all parts of the body functioning together so that the body works the way it's supposed to work. And so for the body of the Lord, the church, to work the way it's supposed to, all of its parts have to function together. That being said, there are these quirky little things that people might say regarding the church. For example, a person might uh, say within himself, you know what, I'm not really needed here. Um, he might say, if I leave, I won't be missed. Um, there's nothing that I can do that's really important. When a person takes that stance, the whole body suffers. I spent my career uh, in education. I was a school teacher. And I thought it was intimately important for me to be in front of my classroom every day. 
And so I missed very, very few days of school during the course of my teaching career. Why? Because that's what I was destined to do in my life as a career. I was to teach children. And in my particular area, uh, I thought that I taught them well. And if I wasn't there, they wouldn't be taught as well as they would be taught if I were there. It, it, it almost handicapped my children that I taught when I wasn't there because I couldn't avail myself of them. The class wasn't working at full, at its full potential. And so with that in mind, this is how the church works. The church works and changes potential into performance. Uh, I had a, a coach of mine once say to me that performance counts and not potential. It's not what we can do that is important. It is what we actually do that makes the importance. And that happens when all parts of the body function together, which all parts of the body does its share. The effective working by which every part does its share. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16. When parts and people in the church are not doing what they ought to be doing and using their talents as they should, the church just doesn't work the way it should work and it as uh, the Lord put it together to work. We just need to understand that Jesus gave up his life for the church. And with that, he became the head of the church. You remember when Peter said to Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, uh, flesh and blood didn't tell you that, Peter. But because of that confession, this is the confession upon which the church would be built. And so the growth of the body for the edifying has to happen. If it doesn't happen, the church does not fulfill its mission here on earth. And let's go back to the title, No Life Beyond the Body. We can only hope to achieve eternal life with the Lord when we function together with members of Christ's church, with Jesus at it as its head. When we fully understand that the church is the body of Christ and functions like a body working with all of its members functioning, we see the need we see the need for becoming more involved. I've used the term often as a preacher. We have to do more uh, within our worship than just be pew sitters. Anybody can sit in a pew. It is how we function within the church that makes it important to God. And we see the need for doing in the church and only the members of the Lord's church can do. With that understood, this is what Jesus taught his disciples. And so understandably so, for a member of the body that does not function, it's sometimes often better that that uh, that, that person is separated from the body and, and we don't ever want that. The Hebrew writer said that, that, uh, all, you know, God wanted all to come to know the glory of God. God wants all to be saved. And you know, 
what happened in the first century church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. It said daily the Lord was adding members to his body. And um, we come to understand that, um, you know, we have to feel like that I'm such an important functioning part of the body that I have to be within the body and to fulfill my function to make this body work the way it's supposed to work. This is how we are nourished. We are nourished through one another. I'm so often reminded of the importance of attending worship in Hebrews, uh, the 10th chapter in the 25th verse, where it talks about those that would forsake the assembling. But in verse 24, it gives the reasoning. It tells us that we are to love and encourage one another to good works. Now, who are the ones loving and encouraging one another to do good works? They are the members of the body. They are the members of the church. And so it would be my theme tonight as I finish this lesson is that we need to all work at being more productive members of the body of Christ, that we would all benefit by the mutual strength that's found in the numbers and that's found in that same desire that we have to be Christ-like. Let's finish with the words of Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Peter concludes that with an amen. As functioning part of the Lord's body, we are to understand that this life comes within the body itself. If you're not a member of the Lord's body, if you've not taken on Jesus as your savior, if you're not through hearing and believing the word and confessing Jesus as the son of God and repenting of your former life and then being baptized for the remission of your sins, you're not part of this functioning body, this functioning body that is working with one another and comforting one another. And so if you need to come to the Lord tonight, uh, please be in touch with us. We will be there for you and help you to fulfill becoming a member of the Lord's church by being baptized into Jesus Christ. Let's end with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the church. We're so grateful that Jesus was willing to lay down his life. And with that, that he became the head of the church, the kingdom of God here on earth. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we try to achieve through church activities the work that uh, I believe God has intended for us to do. Help us as functioning members to use our talents as best we can to edify, uplift, and encourage one another within the body. I pray that you would continue to bless us, dear God. Be with us. Help us to uh, come to the realization that there is indeed no life outside of the body. Con continue to bless us. Continue to comfort us. We ask this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. 
God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God.